Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop once again. So today I have a 2007 Ford F-150 543 valve uh, that has a number of issues. One of them being, the most important one being, he has a cylinder two misfire, PO302, uh, and he cannot get rid of it. So the cylinder two misfire, which is the second cylinder back on the passenger side, and he's put coils and plugs in it recently and no real change. So he kind of brought it over here to get it diagnosed and diagnosed properly. So the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to verify the concerns. So let's go ahead and get inside, bust the scan tool out and check it out. So, you know, it's a pretty young vehicle, 130,000 miles or so on there, 07. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is pull codes on it and verify it. So we have... A couple different misfire codes, 300, 316, of course, uh, the dedicated one, 302, and then 451 and 460, which is for like the fuel level sensor and the uh, EVAP system. Nothing to do with our misfire, so we're just going to concentrate on the misfire today. All right, some cylinder two misfire, all right? So let's go ahead and verify it now that we know we have a code. Real quick, though, uh, let's go ahead and get some mode six data just to see if all our cylinders are hitting and misfiring and they're not misfiring enough to throw a code. Let's get the full picture here. So we'll bring it all the way down over here. Looks like we have zero counts all the way along on here. Except for, wow, look at cylinder two. So cylinder two data there, Woo! big time. All right, interesting. So it's definitely isolated cylinder two. So let's go ahead and verify it. Now this one ran pretty rough when I pulled it in. So I'm sure we're gonna see it on the power balance here. <clears throat> okay, so this deep V you're seeing here is a misfire. That's how it signals there's a misfire right here. That's how it displays there's a misfire. So you can see, right now it's doing it constantly. It's getting deeper. You can see, that's a dead misfire. It's pretty bad, smell of fuel and everything. So the exhaust manifold tick went away. Let's clear it out. Dead misfire, turn the air off. So what we'll do is we'll brake torque it real quick, just to see if other cylinders kind of drop out on here. it a little bit all right so nothing nothing else it's number two is a dead misfire no matter if you goose it or it's sitting at idle at no load great so the very next thing we're going to do because it is a dead misfire idle which usually does not indicate a secondary ignition issue secondary ignition you know coils and plugs they usually fail under load so you're pushing it so i'm talking uh, low RPM, high load. That's when they're stressed and they fail. So this, based on this information, a misfire idle, unless he has oil or water down in that spark plug well, does not indicate a secondary ignition problem right now. I can tell that already. And we just pulled it in. So I'm hoping we're going to check compression next with the scan. So it's relative relative compression test and i'm really hoping for this guy's sake it has nothing to do with base engine so let's go ahead and do it there we go so it cranks nice and fast it feels a little inconsistent but sounds good no we're good all the way across zero percent so they're all even so if you had a compression issue causing a misfire, you would definitely see it. I mean, it would be, you know, it depends. It, it, it'd be at least 5%, usually 10% or lower of a loss on there, of a difference compared to the all the other cylinders that are okay. And we have 0%. I mean, this is absolutely perfect. So this should be an interesting one on here. Now, again, if we have a roller follower causing this problem, generally the, the misfire will be there cold, all right? Um, and it'll kind of go away when it's hot. If a roller follower kicked out for the intake, um, and again, if that roller follower kicked out, 
causing a misfire, it will not show on a compression test because the other intake followers working just fine, the exhaust followers working just fine for that cylinder. So let's go over to the engine and start digging and see what the heck is going on here. All right, first things first, I like to perform a good a visual inspection for the cylinder that we're having a problem with. So number two is on the passenger side here. So it's one, two, three, and four. So it's right out here in the open. So we'll look at it right here is the coil and the injector for cylinder number two. So the first thing I look at is to make sure the harness is okay, no mice damage, anything like, like that. And of course the wires, the primary wires going down to the injector and the coil are okay and no mice damage, they're connected, all that good stuff and they look perfectly fine, which is what I expect because there's no primary codes uh, set in the PCM for either one of those, all right? So the very first problem I have here is these cheap coils that are installed on here. So they look like they're MSD coils, which are okay coils, but these look like they're even worse. They're like knockoff MSD coils, real cheap stuff. So, you know, I warn people over and over again, they think they're going in there. They're gonna put a whole new set of coils on, new, new plugs, and they're gonna get rid of all those old Ford coils that have 130,000 miles on them. Nine times out of 10, the Ford coils, especially the DG511s and newer, are more reliable at 130, 200,000 miles than a brand new aftermarket one out of the box. It's just the facts of life. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the coil and we're gonna check the spark plug, make sure the inside load it and crack it, it's very common. Um, make sure that's okay if it's okay, put it back in. And then we're gonna put a known good Ford coil on there retest and go from there it can be that simple guys all right here we go so we're gonna go after cylinder number two uh ignition coil so we'll get the injector wire out of here looks good to go and same thing with the coil seals torn on it but otherwise pins look good to go they're not pushed back in there and like that they don't appear to be spread so go ahead and pull the coil out and we'll check it out These, these coils look ultra cheap. Okay, so already I can tell you, yeah, based on this, what I can see here is the spark plug is loose, it ran lean, and it burnt up. So the center electrode and probably the ground strap is gone on it, causing that dead misfire. How do I know that? Just by pulling the coil well, Look at this coil, it's a really cheap coil. I still don't approve of these, but looking at the boot on here, you can see it's not real shiny on here and clean looking anymore. Bring you in a little bit. Look at the boot on here, all right? So up here is nice and clean, okay? Remember these coils are newer. And you get down towards where it goes over the plug over here and you can see how brown it's getting. That's all exhaust gases that are coming up and passed because the plug is not seated anymore and it's coming up and passed on there, all right? So when the, when the cylinder pulls down, it draws in the air-fuel mixture, it's drawing in extra air and it's running lean and it burns out the center electrode and ground strap on there. So look at this, I can see the brown residue on there, plus you do a little sniff test on there. Oh yeah, it smells like an, an old 50s car or something like that. It's raw exhaust gases. Should never smell that this side of the cylinder head. So let's see if I can loosen it by hand with just this. Let me put some air down there quick. it's really loose or he's using those junk champion plugs that are five eighths I don't know see in the five four three valve engines they're they're nine sixteenths but let's say it's five eighths I think we'll get get a five eighths I absolutely hate these freaking Champion, I think Auto Light makes the 5 8 ones. 
Okay, so there we go. So I know you can't see it. Let me put my hand up a little bit. Yeah, I'm turning that out by hand. You see it? So let's go ahead and get it out. Excuse me. champion brand down there so here's the problem the champions are thicker see how thick the wall is here the wall is really thick compared to the ford ones and so is the strap it's not really thin so this one yes we have a lean misfire happening uh, but it's not burnt up on here the only thing i check for on here is the porcelain it looks okay Sorry, you guys couldn't see that. I'm looking for burnt marks on here from carbon tracking. So we're good there. But you can see the amount of soot coming past. Here's the seat right here. And it's coming past and up. And of course, we saw it in our boot. And like I said, um, on the Ford ones, with the thinner walls and all that, it'll burn it up. The shell, the ground strap, and the center electrode. And this one's it's pretty burned out, especially in the center there. Uh, but it's causing, it, the, the problem here currently is a lean misfire. So that's why it's misfiring. So let's go ahead and clear it out on there. All right, so let's go ahead and put the Ford plug in there. A new Ford plug. The other one's burnt up, it's done for. Start them off by hand at all times. You don't want to cross thread that. There we go, we're starting a seat. And then the one thing a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, these are 25 foot pounds. It's pretty high for a spark plug. So you can use a torque wrench or a calibrated arm like me. Yep, we're good without side loading it. So that part's good. And then once the coils get burnt up like this, I recommend at least changing the boot on there. But for right now, we can test it with the new plug in there it's by pushing it back in, reconnecting our injector and coil, and then running it. And we'll see if it's okay or not. Make sure it's fully clipped in there. There we go. All right, let's go to the scan tool and test it out. All right, here we go. So we know the plug being loose is definitely a problem, but it might be a coil issue also. Definitely gotta fix what you know has failed, and then you just go from there. Do the same thing to a power balance. See if we need anything more than that. We're gonna have to let it clear up the cylinder. The ticking you hear is the exhaust manifold. Let's let it clear out. Let it idle down a little bit. Clear, clear, clear. There we go. See? So let's go ahead and put it in gear. We'll brake torque it and stress the system out. See it right there? So we know our plug fixed it, right? We know our plug fixed the dead misfire. We saw that. The reason why I stress the system out like that and push it once again to check for misfires, dead misfires like you see here, is because, like I said, I don't trust that coil in there. So that's why I do that secondary check instead of just saying, ah, everything's okay. All right, so we fixed one problem. Let's go ahead and put a Ford coil in there because I feel that coil cannot handle it under load and it's dropping out on there. And once that's good to go and passes the, uh, the brake torque test in the stall, we can go for a drive and really push it around 45, 50 miles an hour, torque converter lock, fourth gear, 
light increase in speed cruising and that stresses it out the most and hopefully we don't see anything else on here and that is exactly why i do not bolt on the coil until i know we're fixed here in the stall because the coils can fail like this one has you know it's a really cheap coil and then the, the boots all burnt up on here from the hot exhaust gases coming out so nope no thanks I'm gonna fix it, I'm gonna fix it right. So put the Ford coil in there. We'll put the screw back in. Get it all secure, now that we're good to go. And then we can go for a drive. There we go, just snug it up. And again, make sure we're connected on there. want to hear that click there we go now we're locked in so everything's good to go we can go on a test drive all right so that thing looks good to go as of right now let's go on a road test but first let's go ahead and brake torque it kind of load it up a little bit okay so we're good we're no longer getting that random drop out of number two from the cheap coil on there cool beans all right let's go on a road test and get it to around you know 45 50 miles an hour and then we'll see if we're good to go or not all right here we are going down the road so we'll get up to around 45 or so make sure torque converter kicks in and then we'll try to give it a cruise and uh, that'll really stress the system out Clear it out one more time. There we go. All right, now we're gonna goose a little bit. Trying to slowly accelerate with the torque converter on, fourth gear. That really stresses out the secondary ignition and everything looks good to go, especially number two, which we just fixed. So that's fixed. Look at that, nice and smooth. You gotta love the easy ones. Now at this point, it's up to the customer if he wants me to replace the rest of the plugs with the proper Ford ones and torque them down properly and preferably replace all the coils. Um, but for right now, looks good to go. That's what he brought it in for, number two. Time to get a coffee.